solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. One way to solve quadratic equations is by using the quadratic formula. Like all the methods of solving, this one has its advantages. The best advantage of the quadratic formula is, in my opinion, that it works with any quadratic equation. If you stumble on a real tough equation, this formula can bail you out, but only if you're willing to take the time to check your work carefully to make sure you make no mistakes. In this lesson, Joe will use the quadratic formula to solve some equations. Solving quadratic equations with the quadratic formula has one thing in common with solving by graphing and factoring. That is, to start, the equation must be solved for zero. If it is not already solved for zero, it needs to be solved for zero on one side. You might recall working with the equation for the axis of symmetry of a quadratic equation, x equals negative b divided by 2a. The quadratic formula is the same as the equation for the axis of symmetry, but with the addition of plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. The first equation Joe will solve is x squared plus 14x plus 45 equals 0. The first thing Joe does is lay out the a squared plus bx from the quadratic equation. For this equation, it's already in standard form. x squared has no number in front of it, so a equals 1, b equals 14, and c equals 45. Wherever there's a letter in the formula, he places a parentheses for a number to be inserted. The b is 14 and is inserted here and here where the arrows are pointing. The a is 1 and goes here and here where these arrows point. The c is 45 and goes here. With all the numbers in place, this is what it looks like. The first thing to look at is the number under the square root sign, or radical. This is called the discriminant. One way of thinking is that it's called the discriminant because this number discriminates between real solutions and imaginary solutions. If we find this number to be positive, we can go ahead and solve, but if it's negative, we know that there are no real solutions and most of the time, we need no, go no further. When Joe calculates the discriminant, it's 16, so he knows he has two real solutions to the equation. The square root of 16 simplifies to 4, and he continues to solve, and has negative 14 plus or minus 4 divided by 2. Dividing into two parts, there is negative 18 over 2 and negative 10 over 2. The simplified roots or solutions are negative 9 and negative 5. Joe will now look at this problem, negative x squared plus 3x equals 3. The first thing Joe does is put the equation in standard form. For that, he needs to move out the 3 on the right. The positive 3 becomes minus 3 on the left side of the equation, and it becomes negative x squared plus 3x minus 3 equals 0. In the ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 standard form of a quadratic equation, a equals negative 1, b equals 3, and c equals negative 3. In the quadratic formula, the a, or negative 1, goes here in these two places. The b, positive 3, goes in these two places, and the c, negative 3, goes in this single place. The most mistake-free way Joe knows to do it is to have a quadratic formula with the parentheses to be filled in, like this one. And here is the quadratic formula form filled in with all the numbers for a, b, and c. The first thing Joe calculates is the discriminant under the square root sign. This simplifies to 9 minus 12, or negative 3. And since the square root of negative 3 is a non-real answer, we say that this quadratic equation has no real solutions, no real numbers for x that make this equation a true statement. Joe will look at this quadratic equation, x squared plus 6x equals negative 9. Just like solving by graphing or by factoring, the first step is to get one side equal 0. He moves the negative 9 to the left of the equal sign where it becomes positive 9, so now he has x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. And he next identifies the a, b, and c from the standard form of the quadratic equation. He then places the numbers for a, b, and c into the correct places of the quadratic formula. He checks the value of the discriminant, which is under the square root sign, and gets 36 minus 36, or 0. So that makes everything after the plus or minus sign zero, and the whole thing simplifies to negative 
6 divided by 2, which simplifies to negative 3, so x equals negative 3, and this is the case of only one solution. Let's look at this quadratic equation, 3n squared minus 6n minus 12 equals 0. Stop the video and solve this equation using the quadratic formula. Restart the video after you have found your answer to see if it matches Joe's. The first thing Joe does is notice that the equation is already in standard form. He identifies a, b, and c from the standard form of this quadratic equation. The next thing he does is put the numbers into the parentheses for each of the numbers. He checks the value of the discriminant. It simplifies to 36 plus 144 or 180, so this equation has real solutions. The formula simplifies to 6 plus or minus the square root of 180, which is about 13.4, so the formula splits into 6 plus 13.4 over 6 and 6 minus 13.4 over 6. And this becomes the solutions negative 1.2 and positive 3.2 rounded to the nearest tenth. Joe makes certain to get the numbers right by putting the numerators in parentheses when entering them in the calculator. Sometimes teachers like the solutions in simplest radical form, but Joe's teacher asks for rounding to the nearest tenth, at least for this problem. And again, here are the solutions. x equals negative 1.2 x equals 3.2. The quadratic formula may not be the easiest method of solving depending on circumstances, but it has a great advantage which cannot be ignored. It works for any quadratic equation. This has been Solving Quadratic Equations Using the Quadratic Formula. Thanks for viewing.